The venture, a sleek vessel of humanity's far-reaching ambition, cut through the vacuum of space with purpose. Captain Elise Carter stood at the helm, her eyes fixed on the forward monitors displaying Titan's looming silhouette against the stark backdrop of Saturn's rings. The mood aboard was a tapestry of anticipation and tension woven with threads of excitement at the uncharted and apprehension for the unknown. Approaching Titan's orbit, announced Lieutenant Harris, the ship's navigator, his voice steady yet betraying a hint of the collective unease permeating the deck. Captain Carter nodded, her demeanor calm, a stark contrast to the adrenaline coursing silently through her veins. Prepare for landing sequence, she commanded, her voice cutting through the low hum of the ship's operations. The crew sprang into action, each member well-versed in their duties, yet aware that textbooks and simulations could only prepare them so much for the reality of setting foot on an alien moon. As the venture descended through Titan's thick atmosphere, the ship shuddered, gripped by the moon's embrace. The exterior cameras relayed images of the icy landscape below, a vista of ethereal beauty and desolation. Methane lakes, vast and mirror-like, reflected the dim sunlight that managed to penetrate the dense haze, casting an otherworldly glow on the surroundings. We're nearing the target coordinates, Dr. Simon Hayes, the mission's lead scientist, remarked, his gaze locked on the data streaming in from the surface sensors. His voice carried a mix of scientific curiosity and an unspoken hope that this mission might unveil secrets long hidden beneath Titan's icy facade. Sergeant Max Wren, head of security, checked his equipment one last time, his movements methodical. The unknowns of Titan posed a silent threat, and his role was to ensure the safety of the team against whatever they might encounter, be it the moon's harsh environment or unforeseen entities. Touchdown in T-minus 60 seconds, Harris announced, the countdown adding a palpable sense of immediacy to the mission's outset. Captain Carter took a deep breath, allowing herself a moment of introspection. This was more than a mere exploration. It was a step into the vast unknown, a testament to human courage and curiosity. She glanced around the deck, meeting the eyes of her crew, each member a vital part of this grand endeavor. There was a silent acknowledgement of the risks involved, but also a shared resolve to see the mission through. With a gentle jolt, the venturer landed on Titan's surface. The engines quieted down to a soft purr, and for a moment, there was silence, a collective breath held in anticipation. We've landed on Titan, Carter finally declared, her voice marking the end of their journey through space and the beginning of their exploration on this distant moon. The significance of the moment wasn't lost on the crew, a mix of scientists, engineers, and soldiers, they were the first humans to set foot on Titan, standing on the threshold of discovery and the unknown. As the landing gears anchored the venture to the icy soil, the crew prepared to disembark, each member aware that they were about to write a new chapter in humanity's exploration of the cosmos. The mission on Titan was not just a quest for knowledge, it was a testament to the indomitable human spirit, ever driven to explore the boundaries of the possible. As the venturer's engines cooled and the dust settled on the alien landscape, Captain Elise Carter gave the order to disembark. The crew, donned in their specialized suits, stepped onto Titan's surface, a realm of ice and mystery under the shadow of Saturn. The establishment of the base camp commenced immediately, a well-rehearsed procedure that unfolded with precision under the dim sunlight filtered through Titan's thick atmosphere. The camp, a modular assembly of habitat units and scientific labs, was strategically positioned near the signal's origin point. It stood as a testament to human ingenuity, a bubble of Earth's environment on a moon millions of miles away. The structures, designed to withstand Titan's extreme conditions, were quickly inflated and secured to the icy ground, their interiors soon buzzing with activity as the crew set up their equipment and instruments. Dr. Simon Hayes, the mission's lead scientist, was particularly eager to begin his work. He had set up a makeshift lab within one of the habitat units, where he started analyzing the initial soil and air samples. The composition here is unlike anything we've encountered on Mars or the Moon, he remarked, his voice filled with excitement. There's a complexity to the organic molecules here that suggests a rich chemical history. 
Sergeant Max Wren patrolled the perimeter, his experienced eyes scanning the horizon for potential hazards. The icy plains stretched out in all directions, broken only by the occasional rise of methane geysers or the dark outline of distant mountain ranges. All clear, but let's keep our guard up, he communicated back to the team, his voice a constant reassurance in the unfamiliar environment. The initial exploration of Titan's surface was a cautious venture beyond the confines of the base camp. Captain Carter led a small team, including Dr. Hayes and Sergeant Wren, towards the source of the mysterious signals that had drawn them to this moon. As they traversed the icy landscape, their path illuminated by the lights mounted on their suits, the reality of their isolation on this distant world set in. It's beautiful in a desolate sort of way, Dr. Hayes observed, gazing at the ethereal play of light on the methane lakes. Their reflections danced with colors that seemed out of place in the monochromatic world of ice. The team came across formations of ice and rock that bore the scars of Titan's geological activity. These formations could be centuries old, perhaps even more. Dr. Hayes mused, his scientific curiosity piqued by the alien landscape's secrets waiting to be uncovered. As the day's exploration drew to a close, the team returned to the base camp, their minds buzzing with the day's observations and findings. The data collected, though preliminary, promised a wealth of knowledge about Titan's environment and possibly even clues to the moon's past. Back at the camp, as the crew gathered for a debrief, the sense of camaraderie was palpable. They were pioneers on the frontier of space exploration, united by a common mission and the shared experience of stepping into the unknown. Today, we've taken our first steps on Titan, Captain Carter began, her voice filled with a mix of pride and humility. What we've seen is just the beginning. There's much more to explore and understand about this moon. The day ended with the Venturer's crew looking out at Titan's landscape, a silent promise hanging in the air. Tomorrow, they would venture deeper, pushing the boundaries of human exploration further into the cosmos. On the third day following their historic landing on Titan, the Venturer's crew embarked on a detailed survey of the surrounding terrain. It was during this routine exploration that Dr. Simon Hayes, while analyzing the ground's radar images, noticed an anomaly beneath the surface, a vast, hollow expanse that hinted at the existence of underground caverns. Intrigued by this discovery, Captain Elise Carter organized a reconnaissance team to investigate the anomaly. Equipped with advanced mapping drones and climbing gear, they approached the site with a mix of caution and excitement. The entrance to the caverns was found at the base of a towering ice cliff, a dark maw in the otherwise smooth facade of Titan's icy crust. The team descended into the caverns, their headlamps piercing the darkness, revealing a world unlike any they had encountered before. The walls of the caverns were lined with intricate ice formations, their surfaces glistening with a faint bioluminescence that cast an eerie glow on the explorers' faces. It's like stepping into a cathedral made of ice and light, Dr. Hayes whispered, his voice filled with awe. As they ventured deeper, the caverns opened up into vast chambers, each more breathtaking than the last. The air was cold and still, preserving the silence of a world untouched for eons. The bioluminescent flora became more prevalent, illuminating their path with a soft, otherworldly light. It was in one such chamber that they stumbled upon the first undeniable evidence of the Orion crew's presence on Titan. Tucked away in a recess of the cavern was a small encampment, the remnants of what appeared to be a temporary research outpost. Tattered fabric, rusted tools, and a faded insignia bore witness to the human endeavor that had reached this remote corner of the solar system only to vanish without a trace. The discovery sent a ripple of excitement and unease through the team. They were here, just like us, driven by the same curiosity, Captain Carter mused, her gaze lingering on the abandoned camp. But what happened to them? The question hung heavy in the air as they documented the site, collecting items that might offer insights into the fate of the Orion crew. The presence of personal effects, a worn photograph, a handwritten journal, added a poignant human element to the cold alien landscape. The further exploration of the caverns revealed more than just evidence of past human presence. 
the bioluminescent flora upon closer examination by Dr. Hayes proved to be unlike any terrestrial plant life. These organisms don't just emit light, they seem to thrive in the absence of sunlight, drawing energy from the minerals in the ice, he explained, his findings hinting at a complex ecosystem hidden beneath Titan's frozen surface. As they mapped the caverns, the crew uncovered pathways that led to even deeper recesses of the moon. The air grew colder and the ice formations more surreal, sculpted by forces that defied easy explanation. By the time they ascended back to the surface, the shadows had lengthened, casting a pall over the icy landscape. The crew returned to the base camp with a mix of triumph and trepidation. They had uncovered a hidden world beneath Titan's surface, a discovery that promised to unlock the secrets of this moon. Yet, the fate of the Orion crew served as a somber reminder of the risks inherent in their quest for knowledge. Back at the base camp, the Venturer's crew was abuzz with the implications of their latest discovery. The underground caverns of Titan, with their eerie bioluminescent flora, promised a treasure trove of scientific data. Dr. Simon Hayes, in particular, was eager to delve into the study of these unique organisms, which defied the established norms of terrestrial biology. Within the confines of his makeshift laboratory, Dr. Hayes set about analyzing the samples collected from the caverns. The flora, when exposed to the lab's controlled environment, continued to emit a soft, pulsating light, casting a serene glow over the workbench. These organisms are remarkable, Dr. Hayes noted, recording his observations. They appear to conduct some form of photosynthesis, but in the absence of sunlight. Instead, they utilize the faint thermal energy emitted by Titan's geothermal activity. As the days progressed, the team's understanding of Titan's subterranean ecosystem deepened. However, this period of scientific discovery was not without its peculiarities. Equipment that had functioned flawlessly until then began to exhibit unexplained malfunctions. Instruments designed to measure geological activity sporadically displayed erratic readings as if responding to an unseen influence. Moreover, the crew started to report auditory anomalies while inside the caverns. These were not the usual sounds one might expect in such an environment, the occasional drip of melting ice or the subtle shift of the ground. Instead, they described hearing faint, almost musical tones that seemed to emanate from the very walls of the ice. Captain Elise Carter, ever pragmatic, initially dismissed these reports as the crew's heightened nerves playing tricks on them. It's easy to let the imagination run wild in a place like this, she reasoned during one of their briefings. But as the incidents grew more frequent, even she could not ignore the mounting evidence that something beyond their understanding was at play. One evening, as Dr. Hayes was cataloging the growth patterns of the bioluminescent flora, he experienced one of these anomalies firsthand. The gentle glow of the plants suddenly intensified, bathing the lab in a bright, otherworldly light. At the same moment, the instruments began to whir and beep erratically, as if caught in an electromagnetic storm. The phenomenon lasted only a few moments, but it left Dr. Hayes profoundly shaken. It was as if the flora were communicating, reacting to some external stimulus we're not aware of. He later recounted to the team, his scientific curiosity mingled with unease. These anomalies, coupled with the discovery of the Orion crew's fate, cast a shadow over the mission. The team's morale, once buoyed by the thrill of discovery, now grappled with the creeping realization that Titan held secrets that might not be so easily unraveled. As the days passed, the crew continued their work, driven by a mix of determination and the haunting question of what had become of their predecessors. Yet, each unexplained occurrence within the caverns served as a stark reminder that they were venturing into the unknown where the rules of science as they knew it might not apply. The routine of exploration and study was abruptly shattered when Sergeant Max Wren, the team's security chief, failed to report for his scheduled check-in. His last known location, according to the camp's logs, was near the cavern entrance, where he had been overseeing the deployment of additional communication relays. Captain Elise Carter immediately mobilized a search team. The stark, icy landscape of Titan, once a subject of scientific fascination, now took on a more ominous aspect as the crew set out to find their missing comrade. 
The sense of urgency was palpable, Titan's environment was unforgiving, and every moment lost could mean the difference between life and death. As they neared the cavern entrance, the crew's communication devices began to crackle with static, a phenomenon that had become all too familiar in the vicinity of the underground system. Keep your comms open and stay within visual range, Captain Carter instructed, her voice cutting through the interference. The search team descended into the caverns with methodical precision, their headlamps casting long shadows on the ice walls. The bioluminescent flora, which had once elicited wonder, now seemed to watch them with silent, glowing eyes. The team called out for Sergeant Wren, but their voices were swallowed by the vast emptiness of the subterranean world. Deep within the caverns, they discovered signs of Wren's passage, a dropped flashlight, its beam flickering weakly, and footprints that led deeper into the labyrinth of ice. The trail led them to a previously unexplored section of the caverns where the ice formations took on bizarre, almost sculptural shapes. It was here, in a chamber illuminated by a particularly dense cluster of bioluminescent flora, that they found Sergeant Wren. He was unconscious but alive, his body entangled in a web of strange, fibrous growths that seemed to emanate from the cavern walls themselves. The team sprang into action, carefully cutting Wren free from the fibrous net. Dr. Hayes, examining the growths, noted their resemblance to the bioluminescent flora, yet distinct in their apparent ability to interact with living tissue. With Wren safely in tow, the team retraced their steps back to the surface. The relief of having found their missing member was tempered by the questions his disappearance raised. What were these new growths and why had they ensnared Ren? Was this another aspect of Titan's hidden ecosystem or something more sinister? Back at the base camp, Ren was placed under medical observation. He was disoriented but unharmed, with no memory of how he had become entangled in the growths. The incident added a new layer of complexity to the mission, highlighting the unpredictable nature of Titan's environment and the potential dangers lurking within its caverns. Captain Carter convened a meeting to discuss the implications of Wren's disappearance and the subsequent discovery. We need to reassess our approach, she stated, her expression grave. Titan is proving to be more challenging than we anticipated. We must remain vigilant and question our assumptions about this moon and its secrets. The team agreed, their resolve strengthened by the ordeal. They were more determined than ever to unlock the mysteries of Titan, but now with a heightened sense of caution. The moon had shown them its beauty and its peril, a reminder that in the pursuit of knowledge, the unknown could hold both wonders and dangers. The unsettling incident involving Sergeant Wren prompted Captain Elise Carter to authorize a cautious continuation of the exploration with a renewed emphasis on safety protocols. The team, now more aware of the potential dangers lurking within Titan's caverns, proceeded with their investigation, driven by a mix of duty and an unquenchable thirst for knowledge. It was during one such expedition, as the team delved into a previously uncharted section of the cavern system, that they stumbled upon a remarkable discovery. Hidden behind a vast curtain of ice was an expansive chamber, its walls shimmering with the now familiar bioluminescent glow. But it was what the chamber contained that took their breath away. Scattered throughout the chamber were artifacts unmistakably human in origin tools, personal belongings, and remnants of what appeared to be scientific equipment lay frozen in time, a silent testament to human presence. At the center of the chamber stood a structure crafted from the ice itself, a monument of sorts, adorned with markings that bore the unmistakable insignia of the Orion crew. The revelation was profound. Here, in this hidden sanctum, lay the answers to the fate of the lost expedition. The crew had not simply vanished. They had made a last stand in this alien cathedral, their final moments immortalized in the icy embrace of Titan. Dr. Simon Hayes, his scientific curiosity overriding the somber mood, began a careful examination of the artifacts. These materials, they've been preserved almost perfectly in the cold, he noted, his voice tinged with reverence for the history they were uncovering. The team meticulously documented the chamber, capturing images and taking samples, all the while piecing together the story of the Orion crew's final days. 
It became clear that the crew had attempted to establish a research outpost within the caverns, perhaps drawn by the same bioluminescent flora that had fascinated the Venturer's team. But what had led to their demise remained a mystery. There were no obvious signs of trauma or conflict. It was as if the crew had simply ceased to be, leaving behind only their belongings and the silent sentinels of ice. As Captain Carter surveyed the chamber, she felt a profound connection to the Orion crew, fellow explorers who had journeyed to the stars in pursuit of knowledge, only to meet an enigmatic end on this distant moon. We owe it to them to uncover the truth, she resolved, her determination mirrored in the faces of her crew. The discovery of the hidden chamber and the remnants of the Orion crew marked a turning point in the mission. It was a somber reminder of the risks inherent in space exploration, but also a poignant link to those who had ventured into the unknown before them. With a renewed sense of purpose, the Venturer's crew set out to unravel the mystery of the Orion crew's fate, each clue bringing them closer to understanding the true nature of Titan's caverns and the forces that shape this enigmatic world. In the days following the discovery of the Orion crew's final outpost, the Venturer's team delved deeper into the mysteries of the bioluminescent flora. Dr. Simon Hayes, with samples collected from various parts of the cavern system, began to notice a pattern in the data that suggested a level of complexity and responsiveness in the flora unlike any simple plant life. After extensive analysis, Dr. Hayes presented his findings to the crew with a mixture of excitement and trepidation. The flora isn't just plant life, it's part of a larger, more complex organism, he explained. It's almost like a fungal network capable of rapid communication and possibly even some form of rudimentary sentience. The implications of this discovery were profound. The fungal network seemed to react to the presence of the crew, altering its bioluminescence and growth patterns in response to their movements and activities. This responsiveness hinted at a level of awareness that blurred the line between flora and fauna. Captain Elise Carter convened a meeting to discuss the ramifications of this discovery. The crew was faced with a moral dilemma. The potential scientific value of the fungus was immeasurable, offering insights into alien life forms and ecosystems. However, the risks of interacting with a potentially sentient organism, especially one capable of influencing their environment to such a degree, were considerable. Sergeant Max Wren, fully recovered from his earlier encounter, voiced his concerns about the safety of the team. We don't know the extent of this organism's capabilities. What if it perceives us as a threat? He argued, emphasizing the need for caution. Dr. Hayes, on the other hand, saw a unique opportunity for scientific discovery. Understanding this fungus could revolutionize our knowledge of life in the universe, he countered, keen on further study despite the risks. The debate among the crew highlighted the ethical considerations of their mission. Was the pursuit of knowledge worth the potential dangers of interacting with an unknown and possibly sentient life form? Could they justify the risks to themselves and the broader implications for future missions to Titan? Captain Carter, weighing the arguments, made the difficult decision to limit direct interaction with the fungal network. Our primary responsibility is to ensure the safety of the crew and the integrity of the mission, she declared. We'll continue our observations from a safe distance and report our findings to Earth for further instructions. This decision, while prudent, left the team with a sense of unfinished business. The fungal network, with its eerie glow and mysterious behavior, remained a tantalizing enigma, a reminder of the vast unknowns that lay beyond the reach of human understanding. As the crew continued their mission, documenting their findings and sending data back to Earth, the sentient fungus of Titan's caverns became a symbol of the moral and ethical complexities of space exploration. It was a vivid illustration of the delicate balance between the drive for discovery and the respect for the unknown that characterized humanity's journey among the stars. The fragile balance the crew had maintained with Titan's mysterious ecosystem was shattered one evening when the camp was suddenly besieged by a group of humanoid figures. These beings, transformed by the fungal network into something barely recognizable as once human, emerged from the shadows of the icy landscape, their intentions unclear but their aggressive approach unmistakable. 
The team, caught off guard by the sudden appearance of these beings, scrambled to mount a defense. Sergeant Max Wren, drawing upon his military experience, coordinated the crew's response, directing them to secure the habitat modules and prepare for a confrontation. The transformed beings moved with unsettling speed and coordination, their actions seemingly influenced by the fungal network that had ensnared them. As they advanced on the camp, the air was filled with the eerie glow of the bioluminescent flora, casting a haunting light over the unfolding chaos. Captain Elise Carter, realizing the futility of a prolonged standoff, made the difficult decision to abandon the camp. Our priority is to get back to the venturer and off this moon, she ordered, her voice steady despite the adrenaline surging through her veins. The crew enacted an emergency evacuation protocol, gathering essential equipment and data before making a break for the surface. The path to their ship, however, was fraught with danger as the transformed beings seemed intent on preventing their escape. As they navigated the treacherous terrain of Titan's surface, the crew employed a combination of stealth and speed using the moon's natural features to evade their pursuers. The dense fog and jagged ice formations provided cover, but also added to the peril of their journey. Dr. Simon Hayes, burdened with the responsibility of the scientific discoveries they were determined to bring back to Earth, found himself reflecting on the consequences of their mission. Was our pursuit of knowledge worth this? He wondered aloud, the weight of the situation evident in his voice. The trek to the venture was harrowing, with the transformed beings shadowing their every move. It was a test of endurance, both physical and mental, as the crew pushed themselves to the limits of their capabilities. In a final, desperate dash across the open expanse that separated them from the safety of their ship, the crew used every ounce of their remaining strength. The venture, a beacon of hope in the desolate landscape, seemed to be an impossibly distant goal. With the transformed beings closing in, the crew made it aboard the Venturer in the nick of time. The ship's engines roared to life, propelling them away from Titan's surface and the nightmare they had endured. As they ascended into the safety of space, leaving the moon and its mysteries behind, the crew was left to contemplate the events that had unfolded. They had sought to explore and understand, but in doing so, had stirred forces beyond their comprehension. The escape from Titan was not just a physical journey, but a poignant reminder of the unpredictable nature of the universe and the inherent risks of venturing into the unknown. Aboard the venture, as Titan receded into the void, a somber mood enveloped the crew. They had survived, but the cost of their ordeal weighed heavily on them. Among the crew, Dr. Simon Hayes was particularly pensive, his mind grappling with the implications of their discoveries and the events that had unfolded. In the quiet of his lab, amidst the data and samples that chronicled their mission, Dr. Hayes made a profound decision. He approached Captain Elise Carter, his resolve clear in his eyes. Captain, I need to go back, he stated, the weight of his words hanging in the air. His request was met with a mix of shock and understanding. Dr. Hayes explained his reasoning, his voice steady but filled with emotion. The fungal network, the transformed beings, there's so much we don't understand. I believe I can make a difference, find a way to communicate, to coexist. Captain Carter, faced with the prospect of losing one of her crew to the unknown, was torn. The mission had been marked by unexpected dangers and the thought of leaving a team member behind was antithetical to her every instinct. Yet, she saw the determination in Dr. Hayes's eyes, his unwavering commitment to the pursuit of knowledge and understanding. After much deliberation and with the reluctant agreement of the crew, preparations were made for Dr. Hayes's return to the surface. The scientist gathered his equipment, focusing on the tools he would need to study the fungal network and possibly find a way to reverse the transformation process. As the venture descended once more into Titan's atmosphere, the crew said their farewells, each member grappling with a mix of admiration and sorrow. Dr. Hayes, for his part, was resolute, driven by a sense of duty to the greater good. With a final embrace and words of encouragement, Dr. Hayes disembarked, stepping once again onto the icy surface of Titan. The venture lifted off, leaving him alone with the mysteries he sought to unravel. The team's escape from Titan was a harrowing journey back to Earth, each member reflecting on the mission's successes and failures.
The data and samples they brought back held the promise of groundbreaking scientific discoveries, but the cost was palpable. Captain Carter, in her reports to Earth, detailed the mission's findings, the challenges they faced, and the sacrifice of Dr. Hayes. The crew was hailed as heroes pioneers on the frontier of space exploration. Yet, in the quiet moments, each member wrestled with the memories of Titan, the wonders and horrors they had encountered, and the colleague they had left behind. Dr. Hayes' decision to remain on Titan was a testament to the human spirit's drive to explore, understand, and connect with the universe even in the face of unimaginable risks. It was a poignant reminder of the sacrifices made in the name of discovery and the enduring quest to reach beyond the known into the vast expanse of the unknown. In the aftermath of their harrowing mission to Titan, the crew of the Venturer found themselves earthbound once more, their feet planted on familiar soil yet their minds still adrift in the haunting memories of the distant moon. The debriefings were exhaustive, a cathartic process for some and a reopening of wounds for others. Captain Elise Carter, in her official report, chronicled the mission with a meticulousness born of a need to make sense of the chaos. She detailed their initial discoveries, the marvel of the bioluminescent flora, the eerie beauty of the underground caverns, and the unsettling encounters with the transformed beings. Her account was factual, yet beneath the surface lay a current of unresolved questions and emotions. In the quiet solitude of her office, Carter wrestled with the weight of command decisions made in moments of crisis. The loss of Dr. Simon Hayes, who had chosen to stay behind on Titan, was a burden she bore heavily. His sacrifice, in the name of science and the potential for understanding between species, was a testament to the human capacity for courage and altruism. Yet, the captain couldn't help but question the cost of such endeavors, the fine line between exploration and exploitation. The crew, each in their own way, grappled with the mission's aftermath. Sergeant Max Wren, lauded for his bravery, found solace in the routine of military life but was often caught in moments of reflection, his thoughts adrift in the ice caves of Titan. The memory of his own entrapment and the subsequent rescue by his team served as a stark reminder of the fragility of life in the face of the unknown. Dr. Hayes' decision to remain on Titan became a focal point of the mission's legacy. His recordings, sent from the moon until they ceased without explanation, were a poignant narrative of hope, determination, and the relentless pursuit of knowledge. They spoke of initial successes in communicating with the transformed beings, of tentative steps towards understanding the complex fungal network, and of the profound loneliness that comes with being the sole human in an alien world. The scientific community was abuzz with the findings brought back by the Venturer's crew. The samples of the bioluminescent flora, along with the data on the fungal network, opened new avenues of research into extraterrestrial life forms and their ecosystems. Yet, the ethical implications of the mission's encounters, the transformation of the Orion crew, and the sentient nature of the fungal network were subjects of heated debate. As the crew moved on to new assignments, the experiences of the Titan mission remained with them, shaping their perspectives on space exploration and the responsibilities it entailed. They had ventured into the unknown, touched the face of another world, and in doing so, had been irrevocably changed. The mission to Titan, with its wonders and horrors, its sacrifices and discoveries, became a chapter in humanity's ongoing saga of exploration. It was a reminder of the vastness of the universe, the mysteries that lay in the dark spaces between the stars and the indomitable human spirit that dared to explore them.